Today, we have the MacBook Pro 14, which aims to be revolutionary. Not only for the SoC it houses, but because of what it is. It is the long-awaited machine, that breaks the gap between the 13-inch, and the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Weirdly, it has more in common with the latter. You know, Apple threw all modesty in the garbage can when they unveiled this device and the new 16-inch MacBook Pro. And to do that, you have to be very confident in the product you have made. Generally speaking, this laptop looks like a smaller version of the MacBook Pro 16. It has the same rounded corners, aluminum chassis, and exceptional build quality. The device weighs 1.6 kilos and is less than 16 millimeters thick, which is pretty impressive itself. Its keyboard is comfortable to use, as is the super responsive touchpad. As you can see, there is no touch bar, and the fingerprint reader is now matte, instead of glossy. Here, you get three Thunderbolt 4 connectors an SD card slot, and an HDMI connector. Plus, the charging now happens through the MagSafe slot, instead of a Thunderbolt 4 port. This makes the input-output better than the 13-inch models, but worse than the Windows devices out there. Unfortunately, the laptop doesn't offer any upgrade options. Well, not if you're good with the soldering iron. You can take a look at our teardown video to see how to open the device. As with the 16-inch model, this laptop comes with a pretty special display. Its backlight comprises 8040 mini LED spread across 2010 local dimming zones, which provide a very appealing image, resembling the deep blacks of an OLED panel. It is able to reach up to 1600 nits in HDR mode, and about 500 nits in SDR. As always, the manufacturer has done great work. There are a ton of color profiles meant for work with web content, professional photography, and even cinema. This task, of course, is made significantly easier, since Apple has full control over the software, which allows for better integration of the hardware. Not to mention the fact that it now runs at up to 120Hz depending on the content. Only 2 per 100 people watching this video are subscribers. If you decide to just start following us, we'll be able to reinvest more in our laboratory thus making even more helpful videos for you. Thank you, you're awesome. Amazingly, you can get up to 17 hours of web browsing, or nearly 16 hours of video playback on a single charge of the 70 watt hours battery pack. As you know, the highlight of the latest MacBook Pros is the M1 Max SoC it has 8 performance cores, two efficiency ones, and 32-core beastly graphics cores. Our unit comes equipped with an 8-core M1 Pro. Looking at Cinebench R23 scores, it sits somewhere in between the Core i5 and the Core i7 in terms of Intel comparisons. Amazingly, this is the lowest tier option. So, the base option performs well in computational tests, but how does it fare in graphics? Well, the 14-core option posts a similar score to that of the RTX 3050T. You can also see that playing Rise of the Tomb Raider is possible with about 50 FPS at very high settings and full HD resolution. This is still a very demanding game, so it's really impressive that even the 14-core device is absolutely killing it. Apple's MacBook Pros are probably the quietest performance laptops on the market right now. The fans turn on only if you are pushing the device to its limits for long periods of time. Unfortunately, you won't be able to upgrade them, nor fit a USB type of cable without a dongle. However, everything else about it is exceptional. From the build quality to the screen, and the performance. Just make sure you pick your storage and memory carefully. If you want to see the rest of the tests and more details about the device, you can check out our in-depth review. The link is in the video description below.